this is my fake laugh. Fake laugh. Fake laugh. Fake laugh. Fake laugh. Fake laugh. Very interesting what you're talking about. The setup is part of the show. I love that. That perspective. Absolutely. You know what? I've noticed that. I am fascinated by time lapse videos, for instance, where it shows like the Hollywood Bowl before any of the people are in it. And then everyone comes in, the show happens, and everyone leaves again in a time lapse. I've seen the whole show like that. The influx of people, the people watching before a concert. Did you see my video, by the way, on IGTV about Dead and Company recently? <laughs> I love Shakedown Street at Dead Shows. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> this here is a... This is from a book called The Zan Power Discovery, Neotech Power and the Neotech Advantages for Unlimited Prosperity, Happiness, and Romantic Love by Frank R. Wallace. There have been quite a few of these books printed through the years. I remember a long time ago I came across this book. My buddy had it and he let me borrow it. Chuck Plath let me borrow it. And I, and I remember reading it and just thinking, what the heck is this thing? So I thought I would get it again just to see what really is going on. What's at the core? What's at the heart of this thing? I just opened up the page to f page 418. I noticed this. Use of non sequiturs by politicians, the premier neo-cheaters. Even more pervasive, destructive uses of non-sequiturs arise from politicians. Throughout history, politicians have been the premier professional neo-cheaters operating on grand scales. Essentially, all their public statements and career actions are dishonest. And, while all their dishonest actions are harmful to society, most are deceptively hidden behind good-sounding non-sequiturs. But once non-sequiturs are understood, examples of political dishonesty become so clearly obvious and plentiful that further illustration is as unnecessary as pointing out patches of sand on the Sahara Desert. Indeed, Neotech demonstrates the politician's vulnerability, his impotence, his near, so, his near total dependence on dishonest non-sequiturs to survive as a neo-cheater. And through Neotech, all politicians will lose their power, for all their non-sequiturs disintegrate on exposure to Neotech. Through Neotech, all politicians will eventually sink under the accumulated weight of their dishonesties, and for the first time, Professional mystics and neo-cheaters will publicly be held responsible for the harm they inflict upon value producers and society. So there you go, page 418 in the book. The Zan Power Discovery, Neotech Power, the Neotech Advantages for Unlimited Prosperity, Happiness, and Romantic Love by Frank R. Wallace.
Riders on the Storm. So it's basically a blues song. It's a one, four, five, except we change the five. And this insane part that Morrison sings, there's a killer on the road. Brain is squirming like a toad. Take a long holiday. Let your children play. If you give this man a ride, sweet family will die. Killer on the road. Yeah, Robbie. Vibrato guitar. And then Jim sings, Girl, you gotta love your man. Girl, you gotta love your man. His world on you depends, our life will never end, gotta love your man. <laughs> he had the idea to make a movie about a hitchhiking killer, and that's, if you give this man a ride, sweet family will die, killer on the road. But he couldn't, he couldn't leave it at that, he couldn't, the song was just too haunted and too beautiful. And almost, almost as if he had a premonition. And certainly, he knew he, at this point, singing this vocal, he knew that he was going to Paris. You know, he knew he was going to Paris. He hadn't told anybody before we did this vocal, but he knew he was going to Paris. And he was singing his love to Pam and trying to wipe out, in his mind, and on the planet, that killer on the road. So he says, girl, you've got to love your man. Girl, you've got to love your man. Take him by the hand. Make him understand. His world on you depends. Our life will never end. What a great line that is. I mean Wow, so apparently they're having the uh, Love Street, let's see, Love Street, Laurel Canyon, I guess they've been doing this for six years? Yeah, Love Street Festival celebrates Laurel Canyon. So starting at uh, 10 a.m. today... Yeah, starting at 10 a.m., going till 8 p.m. Jenny is uh, going up to the uh, to the to the beach. I'm going to finish some wedding video editing, and then I'm going to go up up there after she gets back. So, what you just heard there was is a video that they posted on the Facebook page for the Love Street Festival, and it's Ray Manzarek explaining Riders on the Storm, how it came about. I didn't get the whole thing. That's a whole lot. I just put little bits, and uh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to podcast on there. Uh, they say Ray Manzarek, some of these folks from way back in the day, Mickey Dolans, how crazy would that be if I recon reconnect with Mickey Dolans? Mickey, dude. You, you, you endorsed my podcast. I'm going to interview him.
Uh, so yeah. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so cool. So yeah, gotta. I'm gonna get my shower. Going to. I'm um, drinking my coffee. Getting ready. Getting ready. Getting ready to rock. Getting ready. Getting ready to rock. 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 It might be a multi-part series. Might be a multi-part series. So. That is something to think about, isn't it? Something to think about, is it not? Is it not? Laurel Canyon, Love Street Festival. There's going to be some bands up there. Oh, so yeah, it turns out that this guy who has been working in the in the movies, uh, you know, Murphy Brown and just a bunch of different TV shows <clears throat> has... <clears throat> Uh, was fascinated with putting together a documentary about a band called Magic Music, Boulder, Colorado, a band in Boulder, Colorado. And there was, I think, like five members. They never recorded an album, and everyone thought they are going to blow up big. And they had opened up for some big acts. And then what happens is they ended up breaking up. These were guys who were living in teepees and uh, in Winnebago's, just out in the mountains, out in the hills of uh, of Boulder, Colorado. And so they were hugely responsible for the music scene out there. They never recorded any music, and yet people still remember their songs. They still reverberated with them after all these years, which is so interesting as we've been noticing, this is one of the big themes here on the podcast, is I will go through the idea books. I'll read from my idea books from long ago. I encourage all of you to look through all of your idea books. A lot of times we'll look back on art that we've created back in the past and we'll go, oh, God, that was so terrible. I didn't know a thing I was doing. Oh, gosh, that was terrible. Oh, no, 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 I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, I ugh, I didn't know anything. Well, that 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 you you had to go through that you know, you had no choice we had what we had in those moments when we had it when we have no frame of reference can anyone blame i mean okay the way that we one would blame themselves in that manner oh gosh i didn't know anything back then if we were to flip the coin is that how we would treat our child if we had a child oh no you don't you don't know anything you're 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 stupid you're dumb you don't know anything about uh uh, composing music. How dare... Oh, God, that's so dumb. I know you're only six months old. I know you're only six months old, but God. Oh, that is just gross that you cannot compose music yet. Oh, my God. That's something that is favorable to my ear, to my perspective. How dare you not create something that is favorable to my perspective? Oh. You know, when we really enjoy the process of what we're doing in that moment... Um, Songs that you've created, poems that you've created, stuff that you've done long ago. Horns and Halos will sometimes break out poetry uh, that she has created long ago. Uh, say, you know, uh, there's something, something that was old to us is brand new to someone who's never heard it before. Think about these kids these days. If we play for them Led Zeppelin, we play for them... Uh, um, Elliot Smith, we play for them, the Beatles, we play for them. For them, that, that music is brand new. That music is brand new, and they are enlightened by it. They're going, wow, this is amazing. Now, could you imagine if every single interview they had with Paul McCartney, he was just taking a crap on the Beatles all the time? Oh, that music I made back, that was, that was shit. That was shit. That music I made back then, that was shit. I sure didn't know uh, any anything about uh, the way that scales worked. I didn't know anything about the way that... Uh, no, he'd be more like, I didn't know anything about the way the scales worked. I, I didn't know anything about the way the scales worked. Back then, you were just playing your chords. You were just playing, you know, here's an A minor, here's a G, there's a C, uh, and you'd put it together. And before you knew it, before you knew it, you had yourself a song. You had, you had your... I need to work on Paul McCartney. Before you knew it, you had your song. Before you knew it, before you knew it, you had yourself a song. 
At first, you, you don't have any frame of reference for which way you're going. <laughs> anyway, could you imagine some of these favorite artists that we have, these famous um, 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 these musicians, these authors, and everything that we've appreciated about them, that we've loved so much, that, that, that oh my gosh, like, oh man, this is so... You know, oh, I love this. And then they go, oh, no, that was crap. I didn't know anything. You know, that's stupid. That's dumb. That's stupid. That's dumb. And especially now that we've tied our identity into this book and our very own hero is taking a crap on their own work, well, now, what then? What are we left with? We're actually truly left with our choice as to whether we want to view that information as valid or not. Um... Anyway, the main point is just appreciate, you know, the more we appreciate the information that we have at this moment in time, and we're doing the best we can with that information, and going, okay, you know what, I did that without regret. Anything that we do without regret, we really shouldn't uh, be ashamed of. If we did it with with regret... I don't want to use the word shame, but it, it just can make, it can make sense as to why we, you know, we look at that vibration and we go, oh, okay, I didn't feel so good about when I was making this project. Now I feel shameful listening to it because I didn't give it my all. I didn't give it my best. A lot of times that disharmony, that discordance will happen uh, when we listen back or, or read back on something that we did long ago. And especially if it doesn't r resonate as true, if we didn't do it with authenticity and integrity back then, then it makes so much sense that we would have that kind of reaction because uh, it's, you know, it's not a, a proper representation of what we are able to deliver, you know, especially if we do a half-assed job. If we do a half-assed job and that is now emblazoned in there for eternity that half-assed job, we know that we made that building half-assed, for instance. And we know that every time we pass by that building, we're going to know that it's half-assed. We're going to know about that secret, that we didn't fully pack it the right way in this particular, you know, area. And it's very unstable, and it could fall at any minute. Dun, dun, dun. Or if we did the job fully... That was something my dad would always say. Don't do the job half-assed. So, and I know of the things I've done half-assed, and I look at it back on it, and I go, oh, I'm embarrassed by that. Why? Because I didn't give it all I had. But when you give it all you have, and you're there, and you've got your back, you got your back, you go, I am standing by this. Why? Because I'm bringing it my all. I'm centered. I am just tapped, turned on, tuned in. which is great. Abraham uses a lot of the terms turn on, tune in, which is awesome because Timothy Leary, turn on, tune in, drop out. You just drop out into that, that great unknown, that everything. So, all of the things that are from way back then, this magic bus movie, or magic, magic music movie, Think about all those songs that those guys created. Even though it never created an album, they never created an album, those songs had reverberated in these people's minds all these years. They always wondered about that band. What was that all about? So this filmmaker sets out, and he decides to, to, to get these members back together, get the story on them, find out what the heck happened with you guys, and, uh, and make a documentary all about it. And... Uh, so what's crazy is now they got these guys into the studio with these top recording engineers. They got these guys in the studio and they recorded this music for the very first time after all these years. And they started enjoying each other's company so much that they started making more music. <laughs> I mean, this is incredible. This is an amazing story in terms of on so many levels, okay, uh, on, on the level of you're never too old to dive back into your crafts, what you absolutely love doing. We're never too old to do that, 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 that right there. 
number, uh, here's another good lesson, which we already touched on, is that the art that we've created long ago um, is still brand new. And, and there, there could very well still be a lot of valid things that are in there that reverberate to our highest joys and passions. Um, it's great because when we write stuff down, it's giving us the opportunity as to whether we stand by those words or not, whether we, um, whether we, 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 we stick up for that identity anymore. If we stick up for that mindset, if it's, if it's, if it's the, the mindset and the outlook that we want to continue to reverberate, does it serve us? Does it give us value? Well, then that's great. Yeah, let's keep those ideas around. Let's keep that precipitation going. Precipitation, prescription, subscription. <laughs> precipitation is both, is simultaneously a prescription and a subscription. Keep that in mind. <laughs> so all, the, all that stuff, I'd encourage any of you who have a podcast or are wondering about making a podcast. What should it be about? Let the let the podcast be about what you're just already doing. There's there's an awesome podcast called Describing a Rock. Each episode you hear a new rock described. Who'd have thought that something so intriguing, something so simple could be so intriguing? Who would expect that kind of magic to occur whilst tuning in to the sound vibration of someone describing a rock? It's amazing. It's amazing. These things offer us the opportunity to use our imaginations. How neat, how neat is that? We all get to be able to plug into, the, to, into our imaginations. Now, a podcast, what do you want to do? Talk about your carpet. Talk, talk about a different portion of your carpet each day. You could talk about your toes. When I look at my toes, for instance, I can tell that they had once been, they look like puzzle pieces. That I could tell how they had once been like if I put the, if I squish all the toes together on my left foot, I'm looking at it right now, barefoot, you can see how they go, there's the indentures there. Like someone went, tss, tss, tss. okay, we're going to cut the slits here, and then now those are going to be toes. You can see where it used to be like one fin, basically, right foot to the same thing on the right foot. And those little pinky toes, they, they curve in. They curve in in a very interesting fashion. I remember staring at my feet just being fascinated, like, wow, that's on the bottom of my foot. I'd look at it just thinking, that looks like an animal. That looks like an animal. Animal foot. Which is right. Animal. Manimal. So magic, uh, magic music. It's on iTunes now. I played for you, but I'm using my uh, iPhone to talk on this podcast. So look up, if you get a chance, uh, magic music. That guy is going to be screening it today at at the Love Street Festival. And uh, by the time I get over there with Jenny, even if we, it's only a few hours, you know, before it closes. Because uh, then that, that'd be fun, too, while they're breaking stuff down. I can interview the employees, what their experience was. I want you to think of Anyone who might possibly be on Laurel Canyon today, just imagine in your brain. And put it out there in the universe right now. For me, please. Imagine on Laurel Canyon how what what would be awesome, what would be an awesome, awesome people for me to meet and to interview. I could interview any of these people. So let's just see. Let's just put it out there in the world. Let's conjure it up. Let's see what happens. And heck, maybe the director of of magic of magic music. Let's see. You 
you got sixth year. The Love Street Festival will honor the Doors on the 50th anniversary of the release of their number one song, Love Street. Confirmed appearances include Robbie Krieger, John Desmond, some more of the Doors, the Mamas and the Papas, Michelle Phillips, Mickey Dolans of the Monkees, Love co-founder Johnny E. Coles, Wilson Phillips, Bijou Phillips, Chris Stills, local musicians influenced by the sounds of Laurel Canyon, and some very special guests to be announced. Special tribute plan for album art director Gary Bird and burp, 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 rock photographer Henry Diltz to be honored. The Houdini Estate. I had always heard about the Houdini Estate. There was a Houdini... Houdini house over there that had catacombs underneath it. So we shall see. We shall see. I'll get out there. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Wow, how fun, huh? Laurel Canyon. And it's interesting because I think I played for you before. Probably played for you on many occasions. I'm just going to play it now, just a little bit of this of this Laurel Canyon song that had popped in my brain, which has the whole huge story. Uh, well, anyway, this is this is the little piece of, this, of the, the song that I had. Laurel Canyon, can you hear me coming? Laurel Canyon. Something just occurred to me while I was thinking about magic music. 
magic music. Because music is magic. I, I was thinking a lot about this, and I know this is something um, that's just... I, I love wordplay. And during that uh, ubiquitous serendipity, serendipi serendipitous ubiquity, the Usu episode, which was about boomerangs, I'll get more into other aspects of Usu that uh, have been written down, documented, tried, utilized, and discovered to be true. Tried and true, as one would say. Music. If we break down that, 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 that fun of music, muse I see. It's the muse I see. Music is the muse I see. So you will see the muse and you will hear the muse by opening your eyes, I yams. Opening up your eyes, A-Y-E-S, A-Y-E-S, eyes, your yes. Open up your yes. Two eyes together. Let's say we pluralize I, S. It's the is. Eyes is what's is. <laughs> is what's is. Eyes is what's is. I. The I am. Is. Two eyes. Two yous. Two we's. Two me's. Two yous is us, two me's is we. Two eyes is is. Something to think about. Hmm. We now take you to 169 2018 World Cup. Telemundo announcers. Hi, it's Mickey Dolans here. You're listening to Inspirado Projecto.
So, the song you just heard is called It's Happening by Wishing to Float. This is a side project I've worked on with Lawrence August over throughout the years, and we've continued to make new songs. This uh, subject matter is the idea of conti- you know, basically continuing to follow your intuition and believe in your dreams and believe in what's going on. Many times we'll hear Killjoy's naysayers, people going, oh, that'll never work or that'll never happen. Oh, uh, you know, that I can never imagine that going right for us or um, working out well. A lot of times we'll hear that stuff and, you know, you might go, oh, I have this idea. I'd like to do this thing. And they'll go, oh, yeah, right. Like that would ever happen. That's That would never happen. Well, what happens when you're already doing it? You know what happens when you're when it's you you've already done it. You know you tell you you create a robot that um, you know communicates to you and talks and hangs out and does cool stuff. And you got this robot and and then he tells someone, oh yeah, I want to create this robot. You know that does this thing. And they're like, oh yeah, that would never happen. And you're and you're going, well, it's happening. It's already happening. It's happening. So. Remember that. It's always happening. <laughs> now, this is a crazy synchronicity that I that I just now put together. September 29th, Yachtly Crew is playing at a place called Alex's Bar. Alex's Bar in... Let's check it out. I think we're going on at 9 p.m. Alex's Bar... Alex's Bar, September 29th. Yeah, it's in Long Beach. So Alex's Bar is in Long Beach. The interesting thing is, Black Pumpkin, the movie that I acted in, as the character Alex Griffin, Alex, it's going to be premiering that day. Black Pumpkin is premiering that day at Kapow Intergalactic Film Festival. I'm thinking in the afternoon. I'm I'm tr- trying to shoot for that. Afternoon screening premiere. That way, everybody has a, a chance to hang out and get to know each other and watch movies and you know be a part of the the, the madness that unfolds at Kapow. And plus, you know. I'd like to pass out flyers while I'm there at Kapow and tell people, hey, you know, if you want to stop by the the uh, the show tonight, it's out there in Long Beach. I would hate to take you away from the first night of Kapow. <laughs> God, what a jerk. What a jerk. What a jerk. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. What is he drinking, they're asking. Well, surprise, surprise, it's some coffee. Jenny and I will be heading up to that Laurel Canyon Love Street Festival. I can't wait to go check it out. Can't wait to do some interviews with these folks. 
In the meantime, uh, I mean, talk about it's happening. September 29th. Let's see, what is that? Jennifer, March, April, May, June, July, August. Is that eight or nine? Jennifer, March, April, May, June, July, August. September. That's nine, two, nine. So that's nine. Let's see. Nine plus two, ten, eleven. Eleven plus nine. Eleven plus nine. Two. Two. Does that make it a two? Let me break it down. And then 2018. 11 plus the 10, or I mean, 11 plus the 2, 13, the 4. So that date is a 4. Interesting. So Alex's bar and Alex Griffin in Black Pumpkin. Astounding. Astounding! I love the synchronicity, folks. I love the synchronicity. It's happening. Here's an idea that I can't remember if I talked uh, about it earlier or not, but I, as I was editing this wedding video, I noticed this really cool uh, camera angle where there's a guy sitting in a green tractor and he's got his blue uh, sunglasses on. It looks like he's got goggles on and it reminds me of like one of those dogfight kind of, uh, those little airplanes that zip around and maybe they would have those stuntmen who would hang out on, a, on, on the wing and whatnot. So it reminded me of this, like the guy, it looked like the guy was pretending like he was flying in an airplane. And so I had this idea of these guys who they really want to fly and they race each other in their tractors, you know, in the open, in the open meadow, they race each other in these tractors and they pretend that they're flying in these little airplanes and, uh, heck maybe even, um, like snow speeders. Maybe they think they're flying. They pretend like they're flying snow speeders. So they got, you know, they got their goggles on, they got their helmets on. Maybe they're dressed up like the, the, the Star Wars uh, Rebels guys. And I just imagine these guys racing through the fields, this, you know, and you see this close up and it's like, whoa, it looks like this intense thing. And you, and you cut out and they're, they're actually moving slowly, you know, <laughs> um, or they are moving really fast faster than you would actually expect. See, maybe you go inside their brains, inside their imaginations of like what each of them imagines they're doing. Maybe one guy actually thinks that he's flying in one of those, he's one of those dogfight planes, like, ah, you know, another guy thinks, pre pretends that he's uh, in uh, Star Wars and, uh, oh, there's a big tree, you know, and then so he swoops around it like it's an ad at one of those ad at legs. Wow. And all the grass, like, flying up, that just represents... Oh, and all the bugs, you know, the grass flying up. I'm thinking that that represents, like, the clouds and... Um, yeah, so that just popped into my brain. The Maybe the, it could be called the... The Tractor Flyers. The tractor Planes. The Tractor Planes. Ooh, like a plane, like the planes, but also a plane, flying a plane. The tractor planes, T tractor, T R A C T O R P L A I N S, tractor planes, planes. Even where you get, ooh, that's good. That that's symbolic. That works on so many levels. Like even though it looks just like a plain field, like it's just, you know, there's nothing there. It, it also sounds like playing when you say it out loud. Tractor planes, tractor planes. Interesting. So out on the playing field, they're playing. Out on the plains, they're pretending they're in plains. Maybe they go down hills, too, so they, they gather more speed, so it seems more real. Maybe they start flying kites from their, from their, their tractors just for kicks. Maybe one of them covers their plane in uh, that sort of chrome you know, that paint that reflects, so it's just like this big reflecting mirror that's actually like, that's just driving out there, reflecting light all over. Maybe the panels, you know, they're sort of, uh, what's that word, uh, polarized? So depending on where you're standing, you see a different color. Tractor flyers, tractor plane, the tractor planes. What are those called? John Deere's. The deer plane, deer planes, deer planes. 
Dear Plains. Oh, that's kind of like a message, like, Dear Plains. Wow. Wow. Very poetic. Just the title itself will be like a play on words, right? The Deer Plains. Plains. Maybe there's a series of different things where they dress up their tractors. There have got to be those folks out there who dress up their tractors in all kinds of styles. Imagine that. You put out a casting call for those kinds of people for this movie. Want to show off your crazy correct tractor. And maybe in the movie, you know, as these guys change their tractors, the appearance, we just allude to the idea that they're just changing the appearance. Even if it's smaller or bigger, just the idea that, oh, they've, they've souped it up again. They've changed it. They've altered its appearance. Wow. Maybe they soup it up where it's really fast and they have to put a parachute on the back so it slows it down. This idea for a song just came to me. I'm going to record it right right now. This is, uh, this is something that came to me. Let's see. Da-da-da! 